This is part 30 of Angular CRUD tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss creating, registering and using a service in Angular. Whether you're using Angular 2, Angular 4 or Angular 5, the steps to create, register and use a service are the same. We discuss the basics of Angular services and why we need services in detail in parts 25, 27 and 34 of our Angular 2 tutorial course. So if you're new to Angular services, I suggest please check out these videos. This is the same project that we've been working with so far in this video series. Now when we navigate to the list route, we see the list of employees. This employees data at the moment is hard-coded within our list employees component. Here we have the array of employees. Now we want to offload this responsibility to an Angular service. So let's go ahead and create a service. We are going to place our service in its own file. So I'm going to add that file to the employees folder. Let's name the file employee.service.ts. A service in Angular is nothing but a class. So I'm going to create a class and name this class employee service. Now, when we create a component in Angular, we decorate the class with at component decorator. Similarly, when we create a directive, we decorate the corresponding class with at directive decorator. Along the same lines, when we create a service, we decorate the service class with at injectable decorator. We don't have this injectable imported yet, so let's go ahead and include the required import statement to import it. This injectable decorator is only required if our employee service has an injected dependency. In our upcoming videos in this series, we are going to inject Angular's HTTP service into this employee service to issue a call to a remote web service to retrieve employees data. So at that point, this injectable decorator is definitely required. At the moment, we don't have any injected dependency, so we may remove this injectable decorator and our service still works exactly the same way. However, Angular team recommends to always use this at injectable decorator irrespective of whether your service has an injected dependency or not to ensure consistency and future proof. That's the reason we have included this at injectable decorator. Now I'm going to create a private field and I'm going to name it list employees. We're going to use this private field to hold our list of employees. The type for this is going to be employee array. This employee type is present in this file employee.model.ts. So let's include the required import statement to import our employee type. At the moment, the employees list is hard coded within list employees component. So let's cut the employees from here and then paste them within our employee service. So our list of employees are present in this private field list employees. Now let's include a method within our service. I'm going to name it get employees and this method is going to return an array of employee objects. And all this method is going to do is return the private list which has the list of employees. At the moment, we have our list of employees hard-coded within our employee service. In a later video, we'll discuss how to retrieve this employee list from a database table. So we have just completed creating our employee service. Now for us to be able to use this service, we have to register it first. We can register a service in Angular either at a component level or at a module level. When we register a service at a component level, then that service is available only to that component and its children. Whereas when we register a service at a module level, it's available to all the components within our application. In our case, we want this employee service to be available within many components like list, create, update, delete, etc. So let's go ahead and register our employee service in a module. At the moment, within our project, we only have one module, that is our root module. Let's register our employee service within our root module. Our root module file is app.module.ts. 
let's include the required import statement to import the employee service and we also need to make it part of the provider array. Now all that is left to do is use this employee service within our list employees component. So let's first import our employee service and then use the class constructor to inject our employee service. I'm going to create a private field. I'm going to call it underscore employee service and the type of this is employee service. So when an instance of this list employees component is created, Angular is automatically going to inject an instance of employee service into this component and we can access that service instance using our private field underscore employee service. So let's call our service within our ng on init lifecycle hook. If you are new to lifecycle hooks, please check out our Angular 2 course. Now on the service instance, we are calling get employees method. We know this method returns an array of employee objects. Let's assign that employees array as the value for this employees property that we have right here. Let's save all our changes. Notice on our list page, we still see the same set of three employees. At the moment, our application is retrieving these employees from our employee service. So, a service in Angular is a class. Irrespective of whether a service has an injected dependency or not, always decorate the Angular service class with at injectable decorator for consistency and future proof. If a service is registered at a component level, then that service is available only to that component and to its children. On the other hand, if a service is registered at a module level, then that service is available to all the components in the application. To use a service in a component, inject the service into that component using the class constructor. Thank you for watching and have a great day.